Diamonds on my neck I like boarding jets I like more than sex But nothing in this world That I like more than checks Money All I really wanna see is the Money I don't really need a D I need the Money All a bad bitch need is the Money I got pants in the coop Bussin' out the roof I got pants in the coop Touch me, I'll shoot Bow, shake a little ass You get a little bag and take it to the store Get a little cash You shake it real fast You get a little more Man, what's the deal, JC Gang? And today I am back with another video. Today I'm gonna do a, mo a mukbang. I think that's how you say it, a mukbang featuring Arby's. But the topic of this video is going to be about my definition of struggle. So, before I get into this video, make sure you guys go like, comment, and subscribe. Be active and click that bell for notifications to my channel. When you see that notification pop up, welcome to JC Gang. Um, let's see. First of all, before we even get into that, let's see what I got up in here. You know, napkins, whatever. Woo. I got my little curly fries. I got me some honey mustard sauce here with some RV sauce. Say what? And then I got me two little sliders here. I used to work at Arby's when I was 16, so I remember everything I got. I got a roast, I mean a ham slider, a corned beef slider. But, um... My definition of struggling goes in so many ways. Not because I've witnessed it, not because I've been through it, but because when you compare your personal things to other people, you notice a big difference. But I'm going to start off with my personal views on struggling to me in my eyes you know everything was not perfect as a kid coming up i was not i'm not from little rock that's one thing i am from Dermot, arkansas i grew up with my grandma my grandpa my mom and my dad's mom and my great grandma grandma everything went peach and, and king like that, but if you was a kid, everything seemed perfect in your eyes, you know what I'm saying? When I, when I went to my nana's house, it wasn't much, but at the same time, you know, you was content. I lived in Monticello, Arkansas, uh, in a trailer. To me, in my eyes, it was everything I could want. I had a roof over my head. I had clothes on my back. I had shoes on my feet. And I had food in my belly. No, I was not mad that we had to struggle from time to time, time again. So what? Everybody gonna do that. Everybody's not perfect. I know these people, these little famous people up here, whatever, have their little money or whatever. But at the end of the day, more money, more problems. My thing is, no, I don't want to be rich. No, I don't want to be poor. But at the same time, I want to be financially stable. Um, even moving up here to Little Rock, Little Rock has bigger things than what Monticello has, Dermot, Dumas, all those places. I mean, Dumas is bigger than Monticello a little bit, Dermot a little bit, because they have more jobs or whatever. <clears throat> and, you know, it's, you hate to see the people that you love. go through hard times as a kid there's really nothing that you can do about it you can just pray and hope that things get better and hope that don't things that don't get worse you know and that's why i don't understand why people act grow up and become so bougie like they always had everything my thing is us as people we all done struggle from at some time and point in life. No matter if you was a kid coming up into this world and struggle with your parents. No matter if you was a teenager coming up and struggle with your parents. You could be an adult 
and still struggling. It don't make you no different. It don't make you no better than the rest of us. You did not. You was not born with a silver spoon in your mouth. And if you was, it's because your parents or whoever made that for you, so you won't have to worry about nothing in this world. And that's how my that's how my mom was trying to do me. My mama had to always work twenty four seven just to keep a roof on my head. Why? Because. I mean, no shade, but my dad was not in my life. My dad was one of those dads where he just did not care. He didn't want to do it. And he didn't care who feelings he hurt in a way. And that's how I looked at him. But I've always had my grandpa, as you can see, <laughs> go out his way and do everything that he could to keep a smile on my face. When it was when it was days where I didn't understand a lot of stuff, I always ran to him and cried to him. If it was things I needed and I couldn't get it from mom, I would go to grandpa and see if I can get it. Not as a side thing you know to try to side with each other but you know if i couldn't get it from mama i would go and ask papa because i know if she didn't have it he had it if he didn't have it she had it. and that's just how it was growing up it would be days where if i was with my dad sure i didn't know how to cook he knew how to cook you know i'd be like i'm hungry Give me a peanut butter jelly sandwich. One time I told this man, I said, Daddy, I'm hungry. Right like now, hungry. See what I got in front of me? He said, okay. Mama's at work. He called his to go to McDonald's. I can look. Like, we was in an apartment. I could look right across the street and see Walmart, McDonald's, over here in Southwest, and all the other stuff. Did I see his little gold cart go across there? <laughs> no. Yeah. He went all the way down the street. Where to? I have no idea. Don't care. Mama came home mad. I said, Mama, I'm hungry. Where your daddy? He'll probably go to McDonald's. Oh, really? Yes. Hmm. <laughs> that was a funny night. But my thing is, us as kids, no, we should not have to go to bed hungry. No, we should not have to go to bed fighting our hunger. Because we don't want to seem greedy. And me as a kid, it was something nice where I did go to sleep hungry. But at the same time, it was so nice where I fought my hunger because I didn't want to feel like I was eating too much or what my mama had or whoever gave me something to eat. I didn't want to feel like I was taking food out of their mouths when they could have, when we could have equal amounts of food. You know, it would be like that sometimes. Sometimes you be a little more hungry than what you expect, and you can't help that. But me, I was the type of kid, I would always make a sacrifice. If I said I was full, and 10 minutes later end up being hungry again, I wouldn't say nothing. Because I know I'm not the only person in the house who needs to eat something or whatever. Getting older now, you might see me here in this pretty house. But at the end of the day, you could be on the outside looking in, trying to figure out, oh, how she keep a smile on her face, this, this, and that. She always looking like this. She always looking like that. Keep my hair done. Don't judge me by looks. Judge me by what you know. Better yet, don't even judge me at all for a fact. Because first of all, you don't have all your facts together. You don't know what a person might go through in their life just to keep, just to be happy. You don't know what a person goes through in their life just to keep their friends or other family members content and not to worry about them when you worry about yourself and your parents too. My thing is... <clears throat> When I turned 16, I got my very first job. Like I said, at Arby's. I think I worked at Arby's for a good five, six months. And I quit. And, um, my main priority, my reason in why I getting a job, because I have the mindset, well, I do have the mindset of, who I'm looking like, I'm going to be 16, I'm getting older, I can't depend on mama, grandma, grandpa, and everybody else for something if I'm not trying to get up and do something myself. 
So I was like, well, when I turn 16, give me a job. Two weeks before, my auntie put in a word for me for my application. She was the manager there. And, of course, I got the job. But she told me to tell nobody. That she was my aunt. I had to address her as Miss D or whatever. And, you know, I felt responsible because I'm like, well, I can pay my own phone bill now. I can help do this. I can help do that. I can take the buying groceries and clothes part and shoes and all that stuff. And I can do that. That's what I started doing. Turn 17, I started working at Wendy's. Um, over here off Shackleford by the new Domino's or whatever. And I worked over there for about six months. I got hired in March on the 11th, and I quit in October. 17 or 15 was one of them teens and i was able to make more money over there not just because of the checks but because i had tips coming in from my customers and the things that i did to make them feel comfortable feel welcomed all the other stuff well i'm still struggling even though i had a job yeah i was because it's gonna happen to anybody Life ain't easy. And life ain't meant to be perfect. That's one thing. That's a true fruit. That's a true fact. That's a true rule. Don't let nobody tell you that they always had it easy. Because they lying to you. If you look at the way you grew up, that person that said that they always had it easy might have had it a little bit easy. They might have had a little bit of leeway. Or they said that to boost their confidence because they know they had it hard too and they can relate to what you're going through. Or they might have had it worse. I could be up here saying that I didn't have no food or whatever, for example. And that person over there might not have had enough clothes, enough shoes. They might have had to share their room with 15 siblings. You never know. And I haven't heard stories like that before and it breaks my heart because I would hate to have all those people in the, in the same room with me. And then go to school with the same clothes, same shoes, same socks, drawers, whatever. I know that's embarrassment. <clears throat> Not only embarrassment, but that's low confidence. I mean, hey, we all go through our rough time. So nobody is better than anybody in this world at all. Even these celebrities out here, even these people getting rich off of whatever they're doing. Just because you might dress better, just because you might be able to afford all the latest fashion and whatever, all the Nike clothes, all the Jordan clothes, all the Nike shoes, Jordan shoes, all the jewelry that you want, you know, kudos to you. But us other people, we have to struggle to get to where we need to be. We have to struggle to be happy. It's a lesson. I always tell my mama, like, mama, the day I have kids, bro, I don't want my kids to have to worry about nothing. I don't want my kids to ever have to starve. I don't want my kids to ever have to worry about, are we going to be in this house the next day? Am I going to have enough clothes for this? Am I going to have enough shoes? Can I get this, this, and that? What can I afford? What can daddy afford? Whatever. No. I'm not like these other girls out here. I'm not going to bring no baby into no world for the parents who don't care about their kids. Or just using kids as a bait trap. I'm not going to bring no kids out here into this world and not have no money, not enough clothes, not no support, not none of that. When I have all my stuff together, then that's when I have a kid. But right now, no! No, 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 no. Finishing high school, give me another job after high school. Because I'm thinking about quitting my job that I have now. Because there's a lot of stuff going on out there. And it's time for me to move around. I'm not there for basically like a year. Ain't nothing changed. Same BS, different people. Only thing.
But, um, struggling in my eyes is nothing fun to go through. For the people who call themselves bullies, for the people who sit there and make fun of a person because they can't keep their hair done in so many styles. Like I said, can't afford the latest fashion. The nicest jewelry. I, as our generation calls it, can't afford to do this and can't afford to do that. Can't afford to go to this place. First of all, with everything going out, with everything going on out here in this world, why would you want to go to certain areas of the United States for? That's what I don't understand. Why? You got human trafficking, you got kidnapping, <clears throat> all the other stuff going on. No, I wouldn't even want to go to Florida. I don't want to go to places that's racist, even though... You don't have to pay that no attention, but still, that's going to get under your skin. A person looking at you, oh, look at that nigger over there drinking our water fountain or whatever. Look at that nigger over there thinking she all this and that. First of all, I'm not going to be, uh-uh. Because me, I know if I hear some stuff like that, if I feel like you thinking about me like that, we're going to have to fight. And I'm not going to do that with nobody. You should be able to go to a place where you want to feel comfortable. You should be able to go do what you want to do and feel comfortable. And for the people who judge people about stuff like that, it's, it's not funny, it's not cute, it's not entertaining. Don't nobody want to hear that. And the niggas that's laughing with you, that ain't cool either. Because you don't know what you can go through in the next 22, next year maybe. You can be an upcoming rapper now. And all that stuff just plummet to the ground. I don't go to church every day and I don't read my Bible every day, even though I should. But one thing I read in the Bible that is true and one thing that I was taught is true. God can give it and he can also take it away. Don't be surprised. You might have that nice little Buick in the, in the garage. Nice little Cadillac sitting out there. Or a little Lamborghini. Touch the flow type car. You might have these little nice little grills with words on it. I had these nice little tattoos too. And guess what? End up with lead poisoning. And get repossessed for all your money and cars and stuff like that. Repossessed for your house. All because you messing with another person. And about what they go through. So what? They can't get their hair done. Give them an A for effort. I know I said A. Not E, an A. Because a person can try. And a person has their breaking points. You messing with a person, maybe. And you don't know what that can go through. Don't have no clue. You're not God. So don't sit here and, co and compare your lifestyle to the next person's lifestyle. St struggling and having it made or whatever. It's two different things. It's nice when people starve. It's nice when people have to go certain, do certain things. Go to jail for trying to steal for their families. Just so they can have something to eat. And all this other stuff. People just don't understand how far and how deep struggling can get you. It's redundant. It's ridiculous. It makes no sense. Struggling. In my eyes, nothing fun. I remember I used to struggle. As I got older. Try to keep my hair done. No. We ain't one of those rich type families. And we ain't never been one of those families where we don't have no money and have enough money. Me personally, I didn't have enough money all the time to go get my hair done. But when I did, did you hear me complaining? Did you hear me complaining when I didn't have no money? No, because for one, I don't know about else worrying about me. Two, I felt content. At least I had some hair on my head. At least I was able to pull my hair back in the ponytail. See, now it's just puff balls. Because I decided to go natural. Not because I couldn't afford this and that. I could afford whatever I want. I'm working. I'm basically grown. I'm 18. I'm not one of these teenagers just sit around and watch everything fall to the ground. 
I'm gonna try to help my mama or whoever taking care of me out. I make sure you get gas money. Get my chest be short. No, I don't get my hair done. Or no, I don't do my hair. But if my next check is bigger than that check, yeah, I try to go get me a certain amount of hair to do. <clears throat> and get some extras. Just in case I need to redo certain ones if I feel like they get loose. And I done redid the hair that was already already in my head once or twice. This time, take that hair out and replace it with some new hair. And that's what I did. Because it could take a little longer. But anyway, I know people always question me, why are you always wearing braids? Or why are you always why do you wear your braids for so long? Because I have the skills to redo my own hair. I don't have to go pay Betty in or Donald Duck. Thirty-five dollars, or how much you pay for um a touch-up on your braids when I know how to do it myself. First of all, that's practice, that's skill, something that motivates me and boosts my self-esteem. So I can care less on who and what got to say about what I do and how I do it. Don't worry about me. I ain't your responsibility. I ain't know you made me. Okay, I didn't know that. Real fascinating. But, um, I really think that's everything that I feel about struggling. Um, I really hope this video says some things for some people. I hope this video at least gets somebody's self esteem up. If you are struggling, hey, I'd have been there, done it. Am I still here? Not like I was. But I still know your pain. I know what you're going through. So, no matter who you are, no matter what race you are, you're going to make it. Not even if it's today, tomorrow, next year, you still going to make it. Don't worry about what others got to say about you. Don't worry about what others think about you because I done did all that too. <laughs> at the end of the day, they thoughts and opinions don't matter. Yours do, but theirs don't. If you're struggling, just know one day you're going you gonna to be able to afford, if not everything that you want, half the things that you want. And if not half the things, one or two of those things that you want. So what? Do what you got to do for yourself, family, whoever, your kids, whatever. Whatever the class might be. Um, make sure you guys like this video make sure you guys share comment be active like i said before click the bell i was trying to do some little fascinating things up on here this is my first move bun i don't know how much food you're supposed to have for a move bun but this was enough you see i still got fries up in here a slider to eat so what i'm doing i'm finishing this and go post on my Instagram. I just made a Twitter account. So give me a few minutes to um share this link to this video up on there. And I'm going to put all my social media down below in the description box. So you guys can follow me. Whatever. If you have any more ideas on videos I should do. Um, DM them. Snapchat me. Facebook me, whatever you want. Woo -woo. And I'll be gladly, if I can't get to everybody, then I'll be gladly to um, repost them on my Instagram or whatever. So, without further ado, that's the end of this video, JC Gang. Make sure you guys go turn up them other videos. Uh, get my last ones to 50 views or whatever, 50 likes. Woo -woo -woo. And I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, Jason Gang, I'm out. Gang!